Welcome back to Come College Online Ministry and Encouragement. I'm Reverend Jewel Williams. We here for another Wednesday word for this September the 28th. Our theme, a changed mind is a changed life. And our scripture theme comes from Romans 12 and 2. Do not be conformed, do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Again, don't forget to go to the website, Williams Innovative Network moonfruit.com to follow in and be a part of our Bible study forum. We're continuing in um, Romans and we're going to pick up at verse 17 after this prayer. Father, we thank you for another opportunity to study your word. Lord, we desire to have our lives transformed and to be all that you've called us to be. So allow your word to do just that for us. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. So we're continuing. This is part two of love in action. Verse 17 starts, do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. We continue with our second part of what love in action looks like. So we talked last week, and I said love is a choice. It's not just a feeling. It's just not just the emotional, you know, warm and fuzzies. But it's a choice that we have to make. And in making a choice to do something, and we then must begin to think in a loving way. And this is where Paul continues with his love and action. Now, last week we talked about, you know, what love, what, what love is, but then love also has a look to it. And so we're going to look at that. But before we look at those points, I just want to bring a little bit more of the history. So remember again, Paul is talking to people who had one time possibly been enemies. The Jews had, had gone against or not gone against, but had been enemies with, with some of these nations understandably because they had you know taken some of their land and then also we have we're dealing with um those that have persecuted the jews so here now you have paul talking to these groups of people that are now coming together with those that had one time been their enemies or had had been separated from and so he's trying to get them now to understand what love looks like how brotherly love looks and so how that really looks for us today is we're coming together sometimes with people that are not like us or that are different than us. And so the challenge may be this different, but yet it still may be a challenge for us to come together as a family and to live together in our local churches, but we have to do it in love. And so Paul's given these instructions. And this again comes with us having a different mindset, a different way of thinking, and then therefore that'll result in us in a different way of doing and so what does love look like? Well, love is careful to do what is right. Um, love does not do evil deeds or wrong to someone else because they did it to them. Love actually then should motivate you to get along with others as best you can. So what does love look like? Instead of me getting you back, and I want you to realize some of these scriptures, these verses, as we read them, they almost sound like they're repeating. And I love how God will repeat his word because he really wants us to get it. And so Paul repeated himself because this is important that we understand. God does not want us taking revenge on other people. He doesn't want us getting people back. It is so easy when somebody hurts you to try to get them back. But a new way of thinking, a loved way of thinking says, you know what? I'm going to leave that up to God. I'm going to allow him to handle it. And instead of me, not only not me taking care of it, I'm going to be motivated to do what's right. So I'm going to love you and treat you right, even if you don't. And that leads into that second point, which is love does not take revenge. Love keeps loving in spite of what others do. Yes, the world tells you just the opposite. Get even. Get somebody back if they do you wrong. However, God says, don't think like that anymore. God's word says, I'll fight your battles. What I need you to do is keep loving. And even, even more than just keep loving, I'm challenging you to then step out and even take care of. Offer some goodness to those that would have done you wrong. 
So that let, lets us know that then what love looks like is love keeps loving no matter what. Love will compel you to give to those in need, even if they've hurt you or they're your enemy. Love seeks to overcome evil with doing what is good and right. And I know these things seem very difficult things to do. And yes, they are. That's why we must daily make up our minds that we're going to do what's right. We have to con continually feed ourselves on what the truth of God's word is, or else we won't be able to continue to exhibit um, love in this way. And so this is actually the last verse of, of that chapter. But just to give you a quick overview you know, this chapter started off with Paul really saying, be transformed. In other words, you're going to have to think different. You're going to have to alter what you have lived with. You have to alter what was comfortable with you. You have to alter what you felt was the best way to go. Now you have to alter it from whatever was motivating you to think that way and now you got to alter it so it's no longer conforming to the standards of the world but it's being transformed and lining up with what God says right and the first thing he says is it's calling for you to be a living sacrifice it's calling for you to offer yourself up so that you then can line up and be holy and pleasing to God and it's and then he said that this is your reasonable service and so for us today you know, as Paul was talking to the community of Jewish believers and Gentile believers that were coming together, and he was talking to them and getting them to try to see, you can no longer live as two separate entities. We must be joined as one and live as one family of God. God is telling us we can no longer live separate lives, even not just being joined together, but we can't live this separate life even away from the spirit of God. I can't try to live every day the way I want to, and then think I'm going to be reconciled with God on Sunday. No, this has to be a daily changing of my mind in the terms of what things are comfortable, what things I'm used to. And, and I just want to make a note here. Some of these things are not, not even necessarily negative things. Sometimes um, it's just that maybe I, I'm used to doing my own way. And I'm, it's not that I want to do some bad things, per se, but I just still like doing what I want to do. Well, that still does not line up with God. And so I can't just do whatever I want to do. I have to line myself up so that I can be available to what God wants me to do. I have to have a changed mind on how I view my responsibilities uh, in terms of my walk with Christ. And this is really some of the things Paul is telling them. We've got some responsibilities as believers. We have a responsibility to love one another. We have a responsibility to 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 um, be willing to forgive and there's some responsibilities and I have to think on these things and of course we're just not going to know them that's why it's important that we study our words so that we can do this there's some responsibilities to know that you know God has given us gifts each one of us and and that I'm not more important and so there's some humility that you begin to learn in, in understanding this walk as a believer. So there's many things that we have to continually think on so that we're thinking and thinking and it's processing over and over again. So what happens? It then becomes something that is seen outwardly. And one of the things he talked about love, love was an action. So I can say I love you, but if my actions never follow, do I really love you? And so this ends, like I said, this ends chapter 12 of this lesson for today. And I just leave you with the challenge that if we want to exhibit these characteristics that Paul talked about in chapter 12, it's going to take us altering the way we think, altering our minds, processing of thoughts, and using God's process to then be that filter that we do everything to make sure it's lining up. We will be having our, we will continue a new um, chapter or a new, I'm not sure quite where we're going to go. We're going to stay in Romans or if we're going to go somewhere else, but we'll start something new next week uh, in our Wednesday words. Let's have a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you. We ask that you would help us to continue to be changed and tra transformed to be who you've called us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.